Hello and welcome to this week's GG Weekend Watch, sponsored by Bet UK, where the good racing just keeps coming at us from the post-Christmas festivities, which were all there for everyone to behold. Plenty of presents for everyone across the land. And as I say, it continues then into the new year with top class racing from Cheltenham, Warwick. We're also going to be heading to Newbury as well as Lingfield. And the lads had a very good week last week. Plenty of presents for all of you watchers and listeners out there as well. So to start off with, we did have off to a flyer who placed at 33 to 1 for Andrew Paisley Park, who won at 9 to 2, tipped up by Andrew and Daryl into overdrive tipped up by Daryl and myself as my nap winning at four to one constitution hill one for Daryl brave man's game one at 11 to four tipped up by Andrew and Daryl Falco coastal uh managed to win at seven to two tipped up by Daryl as well as his nap good thumbs up there from Andrew because we had the head-to-head -head with the naps between the pair of them so very sporting of you Andrew and theater glory placed at 13 to two tipped up by Daryl so Phew, uh, that was a pretty good Christmas then, wasn't it? So hopefully that will continue into the new year. And we begin at Newbury with a 0 to one two five handicap chase for four-year-olds and over over two miles at one fifteen. Eleven runners here, Andrew. So would you like to kick us off, please? Yeah, not a bad start this one. It's been a good race for young horses, generally speaking, um, over the years. Although uh, Gallic Geordie did win it last year as an eight-year-old. And uh, Gallic Geordie, I don't think he was beat when he took a fall at Lingfield last time, a track where he's got a really good record. And um, he's obviously showing no ill effects from that because that was on the 21st of December and he's out again quickly. Uh, so he's only had the one run at Newbury, winning this by um, four and a quarter lengths from the Russian Doyen when favourite last year. And he does seem to go well at this time of year. You look at his wins, 1st of December, 25th of November, 20th of December and 29th of December. So although three of those wins came at Lingfield, I, I think it's more of a time of year thing with him. Um, the, the more rain, the, the better, really. So I thought he'd go well again. Uh, he's, I've seen uh, five to one. G uh, Gamma Ray's um, sort of very unexposed. First um, first run for 327 days. Um, two, uh, two wins in a second from three starts. Venetia Williams is six-year-old. Um, by Coastal Path, the same um, sire as Daryl's nap. Uh, last week, he seems to be doing well over fences at the moment. Uh, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Gallic Geordie. The other one I was quite interested in was not available. Um, who um, bizarrely was run over, uh, was uh, tried over three miles at Newbury last time out. That's a uh, Ludlow, sorry, last time out pulled up. Um, Matt Shepherd describes him as a slow two miler, and you look at his form. He doesn't do very well on tracks with easy fences where they tend to get away from him. Um, so you look at his record at Worcester, for example, it's fairly useless. But, um, you know, at Ludlow, Newbury, where it does take a bit of jumping, he's run all right over the two-mile trip. So I thought at 14 to 1, not available, might run some sort of race here. I think he can ignore that last run, but I'll go Gallic Geordie. Yeah, Gallic Geordie then to win this race for the second year in a row, but not available, though. Given a very good shout way back down in trip, then at 14 to 1, back to a course and distance he's previously won at. Darrow, how do you play it? Yeah, good race this. Pretty tricky. I thought um, only money was one of the more obvious ones towards the top of the market chase. I remember Rose Sky last time here beating 14 lengths, but uh, uh, he's been knocking on the door recently in, in probably better races than this, if you like. He was uh, only beating five lengths, third or six, entry the time before behind Gunsight Ridge. That's a good piece of form. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a nice horse. He's, he's surely going to capitalise on this mark sooner or later, but... The, the one I wanted to play was, um, and I was hoping it'd be a big price actually, because he's been beating 30 and 44 lengths the last twice. Um, that's Earth Company for Philip Hobbs. Um, this is a nice horse. I, I, I quite like this run at, uh, over course and distance last time. It, it probably came in what is one of the hottest small field and uh, limited handicap chase for novices this season. Uh, Fred Arms won it by, by two lengths. Akon Risk went out and uh, chased home Boot Hill next time at uh, at Kempton in, in a grade two. That's all right. Gino ran today, ran poorly, but he's a two and a half miler and uh, he had some real solid form before that. Straw fan Jack again had won at Cheltenham before that. Balco Coast has come out and won since. And Earth Company for me he was 33 to one and he was, he was beating 30 lengths, but he was better than the bare result. He, uh, he ran well for a, for a long way. He was very, very enthusiastic. Um, that might have just been, I mean, he is a little bit free going anyway, but that might have just been um, heightened by the fact that he'd been off the track for so long. Uh, he was just jumping his fences, being reined back uh, at every fence. He was held up at the rear of the field. I think they were just sort of trying to teach him a little bit there. 
uh, and the handicap has uh, dropped him a couple of pounds. He's uh, down into a, what is a naught to 125. Time before that, he ran at Kempton, and he was quite well fancied at four to one over hurdles this was uh in a hot race one by first street he obviously went on to run really well at run really well at the festival uh beating narrow second he's now up into 150s he was off 132 there but uh that sort of track i didn't think was going to suit him just the shape of the race was never really going to suit him he was again he was too free there but that was a naught to 150 uh this is down into a naught to 125 i think he's got scope over his fences I think his marks very fair he's, i like the fact he's already a little sweeter at this track last time out 36 days ago and I was hoping it'd be about an each way price, uh, 16 to one. There's a few in here that could win it, Clay. Um, but I do think he's got each way claims at around 16 to one. Yeah, so like I say, representing the value probably then Earth Company, 16 to one with Philip Hobbs' sources back in better order as well. Like that angle a lot. So yes, lots of ways to play that opening contest. Now we switch across to Warwick now for a 0 to 120 handicap hurdle for three year olds and over, over three mile two at 135, where again, Daryl, we have a decent sized field. So who wins it for you? Yeah, quite a quantity over quality, though, isn't it? It's a pound and <laughs> handicap. It's... We'll put the positive spin on it that we get some running, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. then, yeah. The, spon <laughs> the sponsor is fitting for this, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I thought Farmer's Gamble would have a little bit of a chance. I won't be getting involved with this, I'll tell you that straight off the bat. Um, but yeah. I thought Farmer's Gamble had a little bit of a chance. Um, where it was dropped in trip on seasonal return at Lingfield. Um, I'd just write that run off. The, the the way he was shaping last year was he just wanted more of a stamina test, the better. So I don't know why they dropped him back to two miles. There. I thought that was a bit strange. Back up and trip at Ludlow behind Langley 100, but um, was given a good bit to do. Stayed on fairly strongly. Tristan Durrell gets on well with him. Um, this is this is not a real race for me to get involved in. I thought one for Mama was, was interesting as well for Matt Shepard, but other than that, Kate, I've not really got a strong opinion, but I think Farmer's Gamble will be a fair each way bet if you want to have a play in a race. Yeah, exactly. And even then, he's six to one still, so he's kind of an each way shot to nothing in that contest for Daryl. Andrew, any stronger opinions? Not particularly strong. I've come down on the side of one for Mama, who's uh, got a touch of the Oxos um, about him. Um, you know, it tends to be sort of good run followed by bad run good run, bad run, et cetera. And, um, you know, he's bounced back from a defeat to win twice, um, you know, in the last year or so. And I thought um, he might do so again, despite finishing 17 and a half lengths behind the winner in third at Haydock last time. The other one that's semi-interesting was Potter's Hedger for Charlie Longston. Uh, yards in good form. Only the second run since leaving Lucy Wadden. It was quite a strange move to send him over fences for the first time in his career on his stable debut at the age of 10 last time uh, at Huntingdon. He pulled up and so quickly back over hurdles, a course and distance winner. Maybe Potter's Hedger can run a race as well, but I'll go one for Mama. Cool, yeah. So, I mean, Potter's Hedger is 16 to 1, though, and one for Mama, 12 to 1 back over a course and distance he's previously won it so we're all on the Matt Shepard bandwagon then so far this week anyway uh now we are back to Newbury next for a handicap hurdle for four-year-olds and over over two more four and a half furlongs that 150 and again lots of runners here Andrew which looks a wide open contest so it's nine to two the field with Picar heading the market it's competitive so where do your dart land yeah funny old one isn't it um soaring glory um quickly back over hurdles after um uh, pulling up on his chase debut at Carlisle usually goes well when fresh and I thought he'd run a run a good race there, and he was very well back, but um, but pulled up. Um, I'm deserting Martello Sky because it's not a mayor's race and it's not a small field. Um, Nina the Terrier, the same reason, really. I don't want to back her against uh, male rivals. The one I was looking at, I'm just scrolling scrolling down to try and find the price outsider in the entire field. Tamar Bridge in the first time cheap pieces for Ollie Murphy, uh, a son of Jeremy. Um, Progeny of Jeremy of five from 20 in first time cheap pieces so far this year. Profit of £27 to a £1 level stake. Pulled up the last three times, but did win twice before that. And, you know, maybe with the yard in better form, having won in December of last year, maybe this one can bounce back. Uh, but it's very speculative. But I guess there's compensation in the price as well. Yeah, there definitely is 20 to 1. And for Tamar Bridge in the first time cheap pieces with Ollie Murphy's form back uh, and then some at the minute, aren't they? They're firing in here, there, and everywhere. So, Daryl, who do you like? Uh, I like Pika, at top yeah. of the market. Um, yeah, th uh, that, that Tamar Bridge is quite interesting because it definitely got handicapped scope of 127 on the basis of those couple of novice hurdle wins last year as well. Martello Sky was just given mention to just because uh, the third time out, I reckon we, we, we pointed that um, the other week, uh, bounces back for the third time. 
forget the run last time behind Miranda. Um, Miranda's proven that to be um, not true running anyway. Um, I like uh, I like Pika. Yeah, I think uh, I, I like the win at Cheps though. Uh, he wasn't um, he wasn't flattered by coming from off the pace. Uh, it was a race where uh, and like a lot of novice hurdles at Cheps though you really do want to be prominent because they do take the pace right up until the top bend and then they uh, sort of slowly free roll and they can be very hard to catch on that downhill downhill run. I thought he did remarkably well to come from well off the pace. The form of Napa's, Napa's Hill at the same venue uh, last October and his Cheltenham run behind Olo to move it, I just think it just gives him plenty of scope of a mark 130. He's an improving horse. I think he'll get a, no stronger, a lot stronger pace to aim at today. I think he's the right favourite um, and I think he'll be very hard to beat actually. So, oh, yeah. oh, like it hard to beat then? Yeah, I mean, I actually did him a disservice with that nine to two. He's actually five to one now then uh, for Pika. So like that a lot. And also, I'm very offended by both your pronunciations of Tamar Bridge. As a proud Cornish person, it is very much Tamar, and we hold that dear because it's the only <laughs> thing that separates us from you English ragamuffins. So we're holding <laughs> on to the dear old Tamar. <laughs> what about the extra finger? <laughs> 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 Our web toes come in handy in the rainy season, Daryl. I have you know. So thank you very much. Inbreeding is in our favour. We are the future. <laughs> Apologies to all our Cornish listeners and viewers. All of them. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. There's a massive following down in the West Country. So thank you very much for finally acknowledging them. Right, before we get into any more trouble, we have better move on to the next race. A race, um, a really like back at Warwick, is the 210. This is a 0 to 120 conditional jockeys, veterans, handicap chase for 10 year olds and over, over three miles. Young jockeys, old horses here, Daryl, who wins? Yeah, um, another oil in the Poundland shop, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I just thought Ghost Steady would win. Really, it, everything went wrong for him at Lingfield last time. He was almost carried out by a, by a loose horse, and he still managed to get up and destroy West Approach it, it, at this sort of level in his veterans company. I like the angle that Andrew mentioned a long, long time ago as well as a ten-year-old angle. I know there's loads of them in here, but finding a horse just in good heart is pretty difficult um, at this sort of level down at uh, Nauts One Twenty. So I just think if you can find a horse that's actually enjoying his racing at the moment. Um, then, then they could go well. He's also won twice at this venue as well, which is another bonus. So, right favourite at, at thirteen to eight, and uh, I expect him to win. I guess. Yeah, go steady. I guess. <laughs> so, with a caveat onto the end, yeah, go steady. Then he is heading the market there as a thirteen to eight favourite. But yeah, definitely no disputing the fact that he is one of the few horses who comes here in good form. Andrew, who do you like? Well, go steady's veterans um, win came over two and a half miles. I'm not convinced that he wants three. Um, it's probably going to be a strong pace as well, so it might not, uh, you know, there might be uh, no hiding place here, stamina wise. There's three horses in first time blinkers here. Um, so, w one of the one of those is quite interesting. Uh, La uh, La no La Cavsa Nostra, I should say, for Neil Mulholland. I mean, uh, this one's very lightly raced in recent years. Things had seven runs in the last three years. One three of them failed to get round to the others. So, this is a sort of uh, all or nothing kind of horse. So, uh, Andrew, so, am I right in saying that uh, this is the first horse this year that Neil Mulholland's put blinkers on? I have no Ooh. idea. I'll check that for you. Um, yeah. uh, during That's the, random, but dur just... during your next uh, next spiel. Um, but, <laughs> spiel. but yeah, the, the, the one I'm going to go for is Stamp Your Feet um, for uh, Richard Mitford Slade. Oh. Now, this one was um, it's a ex Stuart Crawford actually um, attracted market support very early doors um, ahead of that Lingfield stable debut on the 5th of December and then went incredibly weak behind Go Steady, um, finishing third, beat 11 lengths, went some something like 5 to 1 out to 14 to 1. And uh, I thought with that run behind him from a yard whose horses generally need a run or even two, maybe stamp your feet and um, you know take a step forward from that. I don't know much about the uh, the jockey Thomas Cena Easton, Easton. Yeah. Don't, don't know if you can um, uh, enlighten me there, Kate. So. Based with based with Neil Mulholland, yeah, no, she she's a very she's a good rider. She is a very good rider. She rode one back over the summer there. Got a winner at Etoxeter on the scene. I think it was the second string of a of a Mulholland horse and some handicap hurdle there, and she looked very very good. So yeah, definitely yeah. um worthy and uh, and and value for a five pound claim there. Oh, thank you. That's uh, good, good knowledge and uh, encouraging anyway. So, yeah, I'll go stamp your feet over uh, La Capsa Nostra. But uh, again, not a particularly confident selection. 
like both of those two 14 to 1 all the same and yes yeah, stampy gear or stampy thing used to be at tom george's in the jp colors he's a right character of a horse this lad oh, i love him absolutely love him to pieces it's by galileo he's been here there and everywhere and the boulders stuart crawford's now richard mitford slade oh, i hope that he goes in i really do 14 to 1 though for la casa nostra and dear old stampy as well right we are back to newbury for the mandarin handicap chase which is a naught to 135 handicap for four-year-olds and over over three mile two at 2.25 and I'm going to kick us off here lads so if I can do some more time to look up those stats as well um, because I've been toying with this race for quite a while and in particular I was toying between three horses so I hope that I've come down on the correct horse because I was between Marauder, Laskalin and Tallow for Cole but I'm siding with Laskalin as the main play at this stage for Venetia Williams and Charlie Deutsch as we certainly know that this lad will stay and everything just clicked for him last time out winning on his return at Ludlow where he was racing off of, off of a career low mark and that was a very good race as well very competitive and he still managed to win it by three lengths so he's been given a five pounder rise improvement seemingly coming from the wind operation so second start after the wind up should see him to a better effect again then hopefully so laskalin to double up for me andrew how have you got on with those stats are you ready to go for your opinion on this yeah race? well there's a question uh as neil Mulholland had a horse in blinkers so far this season now yeah 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 we're well, going back to the first of october he hasn't had one in blinkers he's had a few sort of cheek pieces head uh hood tongue tie um but yeah without headgear um he doesn't do particularly well two from 65 but uh yeah, his winners tend to have come in sort of cheek pieces or some form of headgear, so that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, as, as for the uh, for the Mandarin, um, I won't bang on about how good a race this used to be compared to... <laughs> we get it every day. Make, <laughs> make me sound even older than I am. But the, the one I like is um, Grumpy Charlie uh, for Chris Honor. Uh, this one was only a seven to one shot to beat Lemilos at um, Bangor on, on his reappearance. Uh, he won the uh, two mile six and a half furlong uh, novices limited handicap chase that closes this card uh, on his second start last year uh, despite having finished last of five beating 74 lengths on his comeback and he also ran well at this meeting on his second run in the 2020 2021 season uh, finishing a close-up fifth when i was on each way and i still can't believe he wasn't in the three um so yeah i, th I think grumpy charlie's going to take a big step forward as quite a few of the chris honor horses have done this season for that first run so i'll side with him um champagne court i thought could go well uh, he tends to run well in november and december i think he's four from seven in november one from four in december as soon as the new year comes around he tends to go off the boil uh, i know we're approaching that but uh, he has one on the 21st of december once i think killer cane was semi-interesting for the tizards although he does seem best in sort of february march time so i thought maybe he will need one more run and then we should side with him next time so uh, grumpy charlie for me killer came one to uh, note for later in the season Oh, I like it a lot then. Yeah, Grumpy Charlie likes it. I, I actually didn't have the prices there before. They've just come up for now. But 14 to 1 then about Grumpy Charlie. He's going the right way around as well then at Newbury for the way that he hangs too. So that's very likeable. Shout for Champagne Court. They're at 22 to 1 and keep an eye on Killer Kane for Andrew. Daryl, who do you like? Uh, a, a couple really. I, I like Laskalin, um for sure. But um, like that, that Ludlow run last time was a, was a really good time actually. Like it was, it was so far improved on what he achieved previously that it you know it could only really go down to, to the breathing operation uh just just on the clock side of things but the one thing that does sort of concern me with it is that he's beaten tied times by three lengths now tied times in that race was given plenty to do and if you go back to exeter last year i think tied times would have beat him if he had jumped a fence because he hit every fence on the way around and they they finished one two or, or in the same order behind lemilos uh, last year at Exeter, and there wasn't much between them there at all. And, and I, like I say, I genuinely think that Ty Thomas might have beat him. So it was improved on the clock. Is it improved form? I don't know. 11 to 2 is fair, though, to be fair. I thought he was going to be a lot shorter than that, um, given the RPR he recorded. It was 141, so he's off 133. Uh, I thought under supervision would be the one to go really well. I, his jumping's let him down time and time again, but he's used to far more competitive races than this for me. And uh, this is just a slight, slight ease into calmer waters. Um, last time was it was in a grade three behind he was Oscar, but he was just given again, given plenty to do. He jumped poorly and uh, he stayed on really strong. I thought he was quite eye catching. He, he was just sort of out, just out of coming into camera shot angle at the uh, at the finish. I, I think he's an interesting horse. Um, cheek pieces haven't seemed to brush up that jumping, but 
I'm just going to put that down to his, he was a bit rusty first run of the season after 240 days off. Uh, he did improve last year at Cheltenham, um, or he was looking like he was going to improve, but he fell early and then he improved next time when Chase Van Corrett Rambler. So he didn't really get a, a second run of the season, if you like. It was his third run. Um, I think there's more to come from him. 136 is so tempting every time he runs. Um, I'm hoping he can put it all together today. So under supervision. Oh, like it then. 10 to 1 about under supervision, but at least I'm pleased that you gave Laskelin a good shout all the same anyway. Yeah, 11 to 2 favour. Expected him to be favoured, but so that's a fair enough price for him all the same. So I appreciate that a lot. Uh, change attack now as we head to the weather and to Lingfield for a 0 to 90 Phillies handicap for three odds and over over a mile at 240. Six declared runners here, Daryl. So how do you play this one? You don't. <laughs> you just ignore the fact that it's on. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This actually looked like quite a good race before the final decks, and then it's sort of, well, isn't it? Um, I, I, I'd just side if, if you want a pick from me, I'd side with Morgan Ferry, um, just because uh, she's a three year old that's got to improve. I was a bit disappointed with the other three year old, Jilly Cooper, uh, last time out. I tipped her at Southall, <coughs> expected her to, to, to improve for the step up to the mile. She didn't. That was a weak enough race. She should have been winning that. So this is much stronger on the whole. Uh, but Morgan Ferry um, has got some has got some decent form that suggests she should really be uh, be making her presence felt here. Um, even the run behind Raise the Roof is better than than what a lot of these achieved in recent starts. So uh, Morgan Ferry. If you had to have an opinion that did this race, otherwise you're ignoring Absolutely had to. <laughs> had to. You are forcing the gun to your head right now, Morgan Ferry. Right. Thanks. Thanks for getting that dragged out of you. Andrew, stronger opinions, any? <laughs> yeah, I really like Jilly Cooper here. I'm surprised Daryl uh, has, hasn't um, gone for her. I thought she was always going to struggle last time at Subble because she was drawn in store one. She's a, a rare Mark Johnson horse in that she's ridden patiently in her races. So store one on the all weather when you under a patient ride. She got shuffled back, hit the rails slightly early doors. She still only got beaten two and a half leather. She's probably better at seven, maybe seven and a half furlongs. But everything's going to be right here. You've got the uh, the stable mate one acre grace to uh, to set the race up for her. She's drawn for. She's going to come down the middle of the track away from that inside rail, which often rides dead in the winter. Uh, under William Buick, I, I thought uh, she had a great chance. I mean, you know, Crystal Cask, I thought, would need the run. This is probably a prep before going back to Kempton, where she runs best. I say um, whoever leads will probably be vulnerable if they end up migrating towards the inside. That's probably what it could grace. Um, and Morgan Ferry, since I tipped this one up at um, Newbury when she landed the punch, she's been very underwhelming, I think, and um, just isn't quite the full ticket, I don't think, with... I think we were lucky having back to a newbury probably got away with it in a week race so you, you look at the rest of them you think well there ain't much cop and uh, i've not seen any prices that's the downside mm. but i would imagine after that last time out seventh we'll get a good price about chili cooper even with william buick on board i think she's a great bet here yeah oh like that a lot of them be like say i haven't seen any prices for this race uh yes either as we record on thursday afternoon so that may well just dictate a few of those selections down the line anyway now it's the feature race on saturday up next with the grade one shallow novices hurdle for four year olds and over over two mile four and a half furlongs at three o'clock where we have a very lopsided market as hermes allen heads the betting as the 11 to 10 favorite for that man Paul Nichols, who is bidding for a hat trick of wins in the cello after success with Brave Man's Game and Sage Star in the last two renewals. But it's an each way price about the remainder, Andrew. So are you tempted to go with one of the bigger price runners? Yeah, I'm tempted to go with Attica. I was so impressed by this one's uh, jumping at Cheltenham last time. He won from the front and he, he just is hurdling technique was superbly fluent. He kept taking lengths out of his rivals at every single flight. And um, you know, even though Master Chewy, um, he looked to be going better than him in behind. Um, you always thought he had it in the bag and he, you know, a, you know, a good jump at the last would just seal it and it did. So um, I'm just, I mean, was he 10 to 1 for this? Um, yeah, I know, I know if you're just looking at, you know, bare ratings, you know, he's, you know, will be getting nine pounds worth of handicap from uh, uh, Hermes Allen. But uh, the prices, yeah, I'll, I'll just go with Attica. Attica 10 to 1 then, yeah, which is very likely then for a Nicky Henderson horse in the Chalo hurdles. Quite a big price, really, all things considered. Daryl, are you also looking away from the head of the market or do you like the foul? Yeah, I like, I like, I like Hermes Allen, but he, he's short. There's so much potential in this field. Um, like This is one of the few times that we should be being quite positive about the British novices. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, granted, most of them will only reach the mid-130s, but 
or the high 130s, but that that might be enough here. Um, Hermes Allen is a good horse, but you know there, there is there is this this is like you said a lopsided market, and this is not going to stay this way. So if if you want to have a bet in this race, I, I suggest you have it pretty early. Um, I'm with Andrew. I like Attica. Tipped this horse last time at Cheltenham. Um, really, again, like Andrew, I was really taken with just the, the side camera angles when this horse was making the run and, and jumping, um, and just the fluent action was just a behold to watch. And I actually think this horse only does enough. Um, mm -hmm. the Kempton run, he, he was only idling in front, and then once uh, once Alien Storm came to him, he, he just went again. And I thought it was a little bit similar at Cheltenham coming up the hill. He was just sort of idling, but he pricked his ears at the line. And uh, he won going away, I thought. Uh, the step up and trip is undoubtedly going to bring out improvement in him. So that, that's one big positive for him. I think that well, the time at Cheltenham was good. Um, look, he's got a bit to find, but he is definitely an each-way player. I, I struggle to see how he's out of the first three, in all honesty. And 10 to 1, I think it's more than fair, really. Um, Joy O'Mashan, the, the second fav, would we'll just touch on the Irish Raider for Paul Nolan. Uh, this horse was entitled to win as he did at Fairy House last time. He's probably the top of the ground horse, so he will look good ground. But if you go through that form, it's absolutely worthless. So I would just be slightly cautious that I thought he would be over bet um, in this market, given he was an Irish Raider coming over. Uh, I didn't really like Vicky Fail. Uh, the other one I did like was the Nigel Twist and Davies horse. Idilico, uh, be how, be how, how do you say be it? You. Be you, close enough. Well, I think so anyway. Don't, like I say, don't take my word for it. I'm just saying it confidently with Idalco be you, but don't don't take my word for it. <laughs> it's so embarrassing that you've got to translate things for me. It's mad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I thought this was this horse was quite impressive at uh, Worcester um, 65 days ago. The way you won. Uh, ease down was I just thought it was quite taken he looks like the making of a proper horse they bought this for 150 grand at the Cheltenham Festival sale um, and for the fact that they're throwing him, it, him in here this deep this early I think is a sign that they think he's quite a good horse he's got an RPR of 130 that's higher than what Attica did at Cheltenham so he's around 16 to 1 I'll probably have a couple of quid on him each way as well just as a small saver but the main bet I am going to play Attica because I think the play side of the bet is is definite value Oh, I like it a lot then. Yeah, and like you say, sort of, and if if the market does tend to to even itself out, then nearing the off, and that ten to one could look big for Attica, as maybe a few more people might latch on to that from an each way play. But also a shout then for Adalco Bu. I think I don't know. I know I said I said this horse's name to Sam the other day. He didn't pull me up on it at least anyway, and uh, and they really liked him. He was meant to run in the um the. The grey two novices hurdle that was abandoned at Ascot a few weekends ago so their hand has been forced now to come here and our final scheduled race is a 0 to 140 novices limited handicap chase for five rods and over over two miles six at 335 is another wide open race here Daryl where it's 92 to field bold endeavor leading the way but who are you siding with yeah I'm not too sure I'm going to side with you I've, I've... I'll tell you the two I've got it between, the two I want to back or I'm considering backing is Unanswered Prayers. I thought he would be favourite for this. He's seven to one. Yeah. That's a surprise given how, how well he won at Cheltenham on his, you know, it's not it's not easy to make your chasing debut at Cheltenham and very few win uh, when they do so. So the fact that uh, he, he won well enough there in what was a very fair time, I thought was a good performance from him. He's 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 only up seven pounds in the weights i think there's more to come from him that's for sure he's built for chasing step up and trip is going to suit him as well the way he found when railway hurricane came to him up the hill i thought was quite taking so i think um he was also second in the uh in a cello here last year so i think he's got plenty in his favor um they're giving him plenty of time to go over that run 50 days later uh seven to one's more than fair about unanswered prayers uh the other one i just i think there's more to come from is sorry quest uh, he caught the eye a little bit running on behind Fern Hill at uh, Utoxter last time. This is a horse that, um, if you write his two runs off prior to that, he really did look progressive. And uh, I, I think there's a bit of talent in this five-year-old. He's all, almost certainly going to end up being rated higher than 128 like in due course. Um, so he's got to, have a, got to have a fair shout in this, I think. So yeah. the, one's 14 to one, one seven to one. You know, I could probably back them both, to be fair. Play them both exactly. Sorry, Quest is the one that's fourteen to one. Then un unanswered prayers seven to one. If you thought he was going to go off as fab, then that is a very fair price for for that horse to remain unbeaten over fences. Andrew, who do you like? I really like Bold Endeavour. I'm surprised he's still nine to two and not you know nine to four. 
I think he's going to go off a hell of a lot shorter than his current price. I mean, he, he was very useful for Laura Morgan. I mean, he, he won a bumper, won a maiden hurdle, won a novice hurdle, then placed in grade two company at Kelso. It was only 12 to one for a grade one over three miles uh, over hurdles in Aintree. Um, basically made a mistake at the first, pulled up lane. Um, then this season, again, still with Laura Morgan, he's nine to one shot on his chase debut. He made a, um, a bad blunder uh, and was pulled up. Now, two years ago, he cost 190,000 quid. And um, I think they then tried to sell him last year, um, went unsold for 210 grand. And obviously, you know, a deal's been done. There's no sort of note on the Racing Post website about how much he's changed hands for, but but it's a nice few quid. Now, first time up, you thought, well, it's very rare for Nicky Henderson to take a horse over from another trainer, isn't it? You know, rather than sort of, you know, start from scratch with them or, you know, from the point to point field. And um, on his debut at Leicester, he, he seemed to be like a bigger price. You know, I think he was like seven or two, four to one the night before. He, they've smashed him up completely into five to four favouritism. He's won by 10 lengths, albeit on very fast ground. Um, you know, I assume that's what he wants, although he has won on soft. Uh, I think this is this is a horse who could be you know, way ahead of his mark of 139. And uh, I think he will be the punt of the day on Saturday. And um, you know, I think if, you, you know, if, if trading is your game, then back him at 9 to 2 now could put you in a good position come 335. Oh, I like it a lot. And yeah, nine two at the time of recording. Good case made for Bold Endeavour to have more to offer for Nicky Henderson and to continue to climb the handicapping ranks. Now, of course, we do have Cheltenham on Sunday, but as we record this podcast on Thursday afternoon, we don't have declarations for Sunday. So this is going to be sort of a hypothetical early look then at New Year's Day at Cheltenham as well as anywhere else where the lads would like to take us to with their best bets across the weekend. So, Andrew, starting with yourself, please, anything from anywhere else? Uh, start with Daryl, please, because I can have a quick look, because I haven't looked yet. Good, great, great. OK, breaking down the fourth wall there, Andrew. Nicely yeah. done. Daryl, have you looked at anything else? Um, Cheltenham on Sunday, just uh, the, the New Year Paddy Power Day handicap chase, uh, always a good race. I I am desperate to... to I think Happy Go Lucky is a well handicapped horse for 152. Um, the form behind Long Press just worked out of into overdrive last year, uh, uh, last last year, last week, and uh, I think that th he just shaped exactly like a horse that was going to come on for the run. I think he is borderline graded material, and uh, I think he'll take a world of beating if he lines up in this. Already, of course, winner as we know, second in the Ultima back in 2021. He's obviously been tough to train, but. Uh, when he's right, he's right, and uh, I think he'll take a world beating if he let, if he goes in this, unless Coconut Splash goes as well. But um, <laughs> that's definitely a race to keep an eye on. He's around eleven to one chance. Yeah, be lucky. So I think uh, he could take a good bit of whacking in that. Um, other than that, I'd, I need to wait for Dex. Um, I was quite enthusiastic about doing the Cheltenham Guard Day until I actually looked at it. So I do apologise for wasting both of your times. <laughs> You have not wasted any time. No time talking about racing is wasted time, as we should all know, because 99.9% .9 of our time is taken up talking about racing. So we never waste the minute. Uh, but Coconut Splash, you just gave the mention there too, is also at the minute, obviously, in the in, in at this stage at 14 to 1. But yeah, happy go lucky. 11 to 1 then for the, what's it called? The New Year's Day handicap chase. Um, One of those two, two and a half mile premier handicap chases that we have at all the Cheltenham meetings. Andrew, have you managed to scan your eye for any winners? Yeah, um, just had to refresh my memory. Warlord is one I've got my eye on to back yeah. second time out. Um, the, the trip was too short in the Holden Gold Cup, but extra on his comeback. The, um, the ground was too quick, and it might be too quick on Saturday, but at least he's back to on Sunday, I should say. But at least he's back up to two and a half in the 155. Uh, any rain will suit. And I must give a, an honourable mention to a sprightly 14 year old, and will be 14 on New Year's Day, Kansas City Chief. Oh, uh, a, a horse we've often backed um, over hurdles at Cheltenham. You know, we've all sort of put up and you know each way at times, I think, and it uh, goes well. Um, you know, from the front uh, under his sort of his, his owner uh, jockey as well, Victoria Malzard. Uh, Malzard. That's I almost said, almost said Mallard, but um, he just <laughs> finished third at Doncaster as we were recording this pod. And he was third at 40 to one at Donny's, must have traded about five to two or something like that and running, kept pulling out more from the front. So if he, he's often gone well after a recent outing. So if, if he comes out again in the uh, he's in 305, I think, at uh, yeah. on Saturday, then maybe Kansas City Chief will give you a run for your money from the front. 
Oh, lovely. Yeah, we don't have prices for that race uh, currently, but you'd imagine that it would probably be a pretty big price. He always is for that three mile handicap hurdle at 305 at Cheltenham and Warlord then in the premier handicap chase that we were just talking about previously as well. Looks a nice price at this current stage. So, Daryl, I'll go back to you, please, for your nap. Yeah, um, I'm not too sure what price she's going to be at yet, but it's in the 12.10 uh, Newbury, uh, and that's Grive Tanner uh, for Paul Nichols, who chased over First Street over uh, over course and distance last time, and uh, is just a winner and waiting. I think off the off a one pound higher of 122. I don't think there's too much in the race to give her too much trouble. So um, again, I don't know what price she's going to be, but she would be very very interesting. Lovely job. And what time did you say that race was at? That was the 12.10. 12.10, yeah. 12.10 at Newbury. Yeah, don't have prices just yet, but good way to, to well, keep an eye out anyway when prices do come out. Nat for Daryl and Andrew? Uh, I was tempted by Jilly Cooper in the 240 at Lingfield, but as I've not seen any prices, I'll go Grumpy Charlie in the Mandarin Chase at uh, Newbury. Generally 14 to 1. Bold Endeavour, a close second as well. Oh, okay. Net and I'm good. Yeah. I'm going to take you on then in the Mandarin chase with my nap because I will side with Laskell and then in the well, sorry, 225 at Newbury in the in the Mandarin chase in the hopes that he could back up that win from last time out on that second start after a wind operation. So thank you to the lads for all of their hard work. A heck of a lot of races that we've managed to cover on this week's show. And it's an old cliche, but we will see you next year. <laughs>